everybody, I want to drop in real quick and give you a little breakdown on something that my son and I use, but it's not for what you think it's for. So this is IXL. IXL is more of an assessment type app. Um, one of the big things that people love to call this is drill and kill. And the reason why is because you've got lots and lots and lots of different types of wow, wow. learning here. Yay. You select your child. You select the grade and subject. I'm going to go to math. And I'm going to leave it on kindergarten. That's where he's working last. Oh, yeah. And from here, you kind of decide what you want them tested on. And I say it's more so testing than learning because there isn't a lot of learning to the app. Um, it really is about assessment. Now, here's, this is how you use this because I want to show you why I have it and why we use it. So I'm going to bring up numbers and counting up to five. Now, Cash is way past this when it comes to math. But I wanted to make sure, if I can clear up that camera a little bit. There we go. I want to make sure he's completed all of his kindergarten standards before um, the year's up. So what I've been doing is we've completed a lot of this. I go in, I select a category, and from this category, I have him complete <coughs> the assessment. So go ahead, Cash. Okay. Now, just so you know, my child reads, um, but if yours didn't, there's this little button here. Put one dot on the frame. That will read to them. So they've got a 10th frame here. You put a dot in. There's a submit button there. Cash just hit it. Go ahead. Show them how to do it again. Okay. If he had one too many, he could place the trash can there. You don't have one too many. You're going to show them. Okay. Now hit submit. And it goes on like this. Not 400 questions, but it just depends on if the child misses one or gets them right. You know um, what happens mm -hmm. if you get them wrong? Thanks, Cash. Okay, we'll hit submit. So, that's actually really important. So, he showed you what it happens when you get it wrong. It says the correct answer is, and then it has a little bit of learning, just a little. Um, it goes on and tells the child, put five triangles on the frame. It shows them one, two, three, four, and a star on number five. If they've got it, which that really is the only choice, they'd hit got it. All right, Cash, put two dots on the frame. Is this what happens if you delete one and... Okay. We'll keep going. Cash is a very good instructor. What's the next one say? Yeah, I am a good instructor. <laughs> Go ahead, baby. See, I have a full world cash dot. Uh -huh. Well, I couldn't make four dots, except they said put three dots on it. We'll hit submit. But this time it's not dots, it's hearts. It means well, I love math. <laughs> hit submit for me. I don't know why I'm doing this video. I should just let Cash do it. <laughs> what does it want you to do now? So there's a challenge zone. We skipped ahead a little bit because there's a lot of questions. Um, right now we're at 3 minutes and 48 seconds in and we're on number 92. 
not number question 92, mm -hmm. just 92. Now we're at 94. Mm -hmm. So you are kind. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Josh. I kind of want to jump ahead so you can see what happens when you complete an area. Okay, so that's a hundred percent there. Um, it says questions my, correct. What's that? Fireworks. Ah. So it says questions correct. Fourteen out of fifteen. You remember Cash got that one wrong to show you what it looks like. Tells you how um. much time you spent on it and your smart score. So that's showing numbers on a ten frame. Now if you hit keep practicing, <laughs> which is really your only option here, it brings you back to this screen and you can stay in math and go to the next item, or you can switch curriculum. Um, language arts, science, social studies. Now, I'm gonna show you this. So if you switch to language arts, for example, you still have kindergarten available. We've, been, we've not done any of this, which is sad, but I want him to go ahead and do these um, just so we have the kindergarten section complete. But let me show you something else. So if you go to science, Science for elementary age really doesn't start to around second, third grade. Mm -hmm. And here's proving that to you. So we got second through eighth grade. So this isn't just for the younger kids. This actually goes a little bit a little bit further. And I've got him on second grade for science. And if you take a look at this, we have identified properties of an object right here. Um, he just did this assessment. Quit moving my arm, baby. Um, we he just did this assessment and got a hundred on it. Pretty much, it just asks you to look at properties like its color, its shape, its size, its texture, that kind of thing. But we could keep going. There's states of matter, changes of state, heat, physical chemical change, magnets, classification, animals, plants, traits. This goes on for a while. Now, this is the thing I want you to see about this particular app, okay? Here, Cash. Stop. I'm going to go to States of Matter. This is what you use this for. So, he's got to get five correct in a row. Continue. All right, Cash. Is it paper quick, a solid, or a liquid? All right, keep going. Is it coffee? A solid. Is it? Aha, good. Thank you for getting that wrong. What happens if you get these states of matter wrong? They do a little bit of teaching, just a little. Solid, liquid, or states of matter. Matter is anything that takes up space. Matter can come in different states or forms. They give you definitions. Solid, liquid, learn. Coffee is a liquid. Take the shape of any container that it's in. If you're pour coffee in a different container. Now, here's the thing. That is the extent of the learning that you get. If you want to learn about states of matter, especially if you're doing learning at home, I suggest you study a unit that you see is coming up um, and then use this as kind of like your unit test. Or even a way for you as the teacher and the parent to make sure that is not a liquid. To make sure that they're getting it. Mm -hmm. um, don't just use this to teach them. They won't get it. Uh, Cash and I, even though he's getting these wrong, I hope he's doing it for y'all. Uh, we've done a unit on the states of matter. So if I was done with that unit, we took it off of the computer. We took it into books and worksheets and a little bit of everything else, experiments, then he should be able to complete this on iExcel. And if I see that he's got holes, I know what I can go back and teach him instead. So let me go ahead and get out of this. So yeah, check it out. There's a lot for science. If you go to social studies, same difference. It once again starts at second grade. Um, check it out. There's historical figures. There's geography. So you get into map studies. Major U.S. cities. This is great. Again, if you have already been doing this with your child, 
it is wonderful for you to be able to go back and maybe test them a little bit or even test yourself as a parent to make sure you cover the basics that they understand what it is you were studying. Matter of fact, we've done a really good unit on Thurgood Marshall and I had him do this assessment, but he only got from that assessment maybe half of them right. So it did not pass him for this assessment, which is fine. I know we'll go back and we'll talk about it again. Uh, some of the things he missed, he missed because he was messing around. He's a kid. Um, government, American symbols, landmarks, monuments, cultural celebrations. I think this is really cool. Can you do Dia de los Muertos? I don't know. We've done Dia de los Muertos. I don't know if he'll pass this or not. We've never done it. What does Dia de los Muertos mean? What does it mean, Cass? Pick the right answer. Buddy, stay of the dead. Good. And then they do give you a little bit of information. Dia de los Muertos is Spanish for Day of the Dead. It is celebration of friends and family members who have died. Dia de los Muertos is a happy holiday. People believe that souls of loved ones come back to visit on Dia de los Muertos. It's such a small little bit of information. I still say, study this, use this as your test. Use this as an assessment. See what's missing in your teaching. Dia de los Muertos comes from which country? Pick the right country. Ooh. I don't know, but to Mexico. That's right. Dia de los Muertos comes from Mexico. Um, they give you a little bit more information. If this isn't something you studied, that's fine. It's good to have that little extra reinforcement. But again, study the topic before they test on it. Now he continues. In a minute, maybe. When is Dia de los Muertos celebrated? When is Dia de los Muertos? Good job. So yeah, I just want to get you to see a little bit of what's in IXL. I'm actually going to go back. If I'm not mistaken, I think if I go back to it uh, again later, it just picks up where I left off. So this is a, a standalone uh, company. It doesn't really go with anything else. There's no real teaching to go with it. It's mostly drill and kill. It's assessments. Sure, they can learn from it, but they won't get anything from it if they're only learning from these questions and answers. Uh, you can check out IXL.com. We're using the IXL app, and there are teacher as well as I parent. I love IXL. <laughs> there are teacher as well as parent uh, permissions for this, and they have different prices to go along with that. I am in no way sponsoring IXL. I just wanted to show you some things that we use on a daily basis. So that's it for today from Crystal and who are you? Cash! <laughs> With Mama Sweet Baby. Thanks. So remember how I told you this isn't really for learning? Now, let me not lie on IXL. There is a little bit of learning involved if you go to their website and go to learn a skill. Um, I say that to say I don't use it for learning. Um, it does, it is a school curriculum. Um, you are able to learn from it, but it's not something that I personally use the site for. So for example, this is learn with an example. Count by tens, click each group of beads to keep track if you count. So look, if they click. Oh, there it is they show you that you would have gone 10, 20, and 30 to get 30 beads. If you go back to practice, and I am not on the app anymore. Um, I have jumped ahead and gone to uh, the website. Same thing. You click on these, it does 10, 20. I hit 30, 40. How many dominoes are there? I can type in 40 and submit. So same thing, click on each group of buckets to keep track as you count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. How many are there? 50. 
So yes, there's a small component of learning here, but again, I wouldn't just use it by itself. Um, there are prizes, I didn't mention those. Let's go back to your game board. So there are awards for different skills. So they tell uh, Cash has got 30 medals, he's answered 682 questions, He's practiced for two hours, 59 minutes, and he's mastered 29 skills. So, I'm assuming, because I've never actually had to play with this any. So, it's telling him things that he's mastered. So, in theory, um, I believe the board fills up, and he can look and see what skills he's mastered. Here's your certificate, Center. There are a lot of certificates. If you have a child that loves to see um, awards for what they've done or completion certificates, they've got them here. So this one's, you spent two hours practicing math. You've answered 500 questions. You spent an hour practicing math. You can view these certificates. And print them. There you go. So... You know, if that's something you want to add to their binder or if you want to give it to them as just uh, an, an extra reward or recognition, you can do that. I'm not going to bother that his name is spelled kind of strange for the uh, login. So. so last but not least, I want to show you they do have here in the corner learning standards for the particular classroom that you're under. Now, my IXL subscription is through a buying group with another homeschool group. Um, it got me a discount, and she happens to be based out of Louisiana. So under our standards, it, instead of it being Alabama, it actually says Louisiana. Um, of course, you know, with Common Core, a lot of the stuff is, is pretty consistent. But despite that, for whatever state that you're in, if you're following along with your state standards, and this is up to you as a homeschooler learning at home, you do what suits you. Um, I've gone to our Department of Education site, downloaded our standards for, um, for kindergarten, first grade, second grade, etc. And that's what we use to go by. So keep in mind, I primarily use IXL just for assessments. So being able to see the standards for other states is kind of cool, but this is not my state. Um, you might want to see if you got something different if you use a parental login versus a school login or a buy-in from a homeschool group. So pretty much that's it. I hope you enjoyed looking at IXL, and this may or may not be something you want to add into your learning at home. It is something we use. We use it actually fairly sparsely. Um, I'm not really big on testing and assessments, but that's the world we live in. We test and we assess. So it doesn't hurt to have in just your learning at home back pocket um, an app like this to just make sure you're covering all the bases. Even if you don't use it for your kids, you could use it for yourself when doing your lesson planning. Hope you're having a great day.